This next dimensional analysis problem is one that just has a lot of steps. Um, and it doesn't necessarily appear that way when you first look at this problem because um, we're not given a ton of information, uh, but there's a lot of steps involved here if you use the conversion factors that I've given you at the top and any that you probably just have memorized off the top of your head. And, um, you know, ones that I expect people to have memorized are things like, you know, there's three feet in a yard. Um, pretty much everybody knows that. There's 12 inches in a foot. Uh, almost everybody knows that. Um, you know, those sorts of things. Uh, I think another one that's going to pop up in this particular problem is knowing that there's four quarts in a gallon. Maybe that's something you don't know. I feel like that one's a fairly easy one because a quart you know, basically has the definition of what it is in the, the name. You know, a quart is a quarter of a gallon. So if you have one quart, you have one quarter of a gallon. And that means that if you have a gallon, you have four quarts, right? Because you have to have all four quarters. Um, so, you know, those very simple English system conversion factors um, or relationships that you've probably known since grade school, those are things that I don't typically give you in a problem that I just expect you to know. And so that can make this problem number 10 here a little bit challenging because you kind of have to think about, well, what all am I going to need in a problem like this in order to get uh, to my final answer? Um, so let's talk about this problem. So we've got uh, because of the high heat and low humidity in the summer, a visitor requires about one quart of water for every two miles traveled on foot. So calculate the approximate number of liters required for a person to walk 20 kilometers in Death Valley. Now I'm highlighting the 20 kilometers here because the 20 kilometers is the only value that's given to you that's not part of a conversion factor. That's just our starting point for this problem. So I'm gonna note that down here that, um, oops, I wanted to do this in green. I'm going to note that this uh, 20 kilometers, which if you notice there, that decimal point is included so that we have two sig figs on this number. So the zero is significant, but that 20 kilometers is going to be my starting point. And so I know in my roadmap, which I'm going to write out here, that kilometers is the first thing that's going to be converted, right? We got to convert into some other unit. Now, what's the next unit going to be? Well, we need to think through the problem a little bit before we can answer that question. And if we note here, um, the goal is to get to liters. So we know at the very, very end of our roadmap, we should be ending up in liters. And so I'll go ahead and write liters over here at the end because that's where we want to get to. Um, and so the only other information we're given in the problem is this statement that one quart of water is going to be needed for every two miles traveled on foot. And so that is a conversion factor, right? That's an equivalent statement we can write that one quart is going to equal two miles, essentially. And so that conversion factor is really going to tell us kind of where we need to go in this roadmap to get two liters, because we know that liters are going to be related to quarts, right? So liters here is a volume. Quarts is also a volume. And so the second half of this conversion is going to be taking quarts into liters. And so there's probably going to be a bunch of conversion factors in doing that because we've got quarts is in the English system, liters in the, is in the metric system. And if we come up top here, do we have anything that we're given so far that relates the metric to the um, English system? Well, we've got one gallon is equal to a certain number of liters. So that's given us a hint there that um, we should be able to get from quarts to liters pretty easily uh, using this conversion factor and anything else that needs to be done to make those units match up. So I'll deal with that in a second just because that's the second half of this. But for the first half, we have um, kilometers here, which is a length being given to us. And in this conversion factor we were given, we have miles. And so before we can use this one quart is equal to two miles conversion factor, we need to get our distance that we're given into miles. And so if we're starting with kilometers, then we want to get to miles. And what are the steps that are going to be involved in that? Well, do we have something given to us up at the top here that specifically relates miles to kilometers? Unfortunately, we don't. I did not give you guys, I didn't make it that easy on this, this chart. Now, obviously, this is just a practice problem. So if you wanted to look up the specific conversion factor between miles and kilometers, you could. Um, you look that up online, but if you want to give yourself, you know, the, the most, the truest experience to what this problem might look like on an exam, then I challenge you to only use the conversion factors I give you on this page or any that you have memorized off the top of your head, which are all those simple ones that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. 
Um, so if I come up top here, the only thing that's really going to help me a bunch um, with this miles to kilometers conversion is the fact that I do know that a mile is going to be equal to 1,760 yards. And so that means that if I can get my kilometers into yards, I would be able to then get to miles. Now that still doesn't fix the issue of going from metric to the English system because yards and miles are both in the English system. So I need to figure out how I'm going to get from kilometers to yards as well. So would I have anything else given to me up top here that will help? Well, the 2.54 centimeters to one inch, that does represent a unit of distance where I've got the metric system on one side and the English system on the other side. So now I can see that if I can get my kilometers down here into centimeters, that that will then allow me to convert into inches. And hopefully everybody knows how to get from inches into yards using the um, things that you probably have memorized from grade school. Um, so notice how I kind of worked through that, right? I'm, I'm looking at what unit I'm starting with, what unit I need to end up with, I'm taking stance, stock of any unit conversions that are given to me in the problem because that is guiding where I need to go, right? I'm noting that the kilometers is going to need to eventually be expressed as miles and that once I get to miles, I can get to quarts with this conversion factor that I was given. But then once I'm in quarts, I need to get to liters, right? And so that's where the roadmap is going to come from. So my goal here, as we said, is to use this 2.54 centimeters to one inch first. And so to get from kilometers to centimeters, I'm going to go first to meters because, again, I always like to go to the base unit when I'm converting between units that have a prefix that are in the same unit system um, because I just find that easiest. So kilometers to meters first, and then once I'm in meters, it'll be easy to get to centimeters. And then once I'm in centimeters, I can use this um, conversion factor up top here to get into inches. Now, once I'm into inches, I know the next conversion factor I want to get to is going to finally going to get me to miles, right? But that I need to be in yards first before I use this next conversion factor that gets me to miles. Sorry if you could hear the dog barking there. Um, to get from inches into miles, I can work my way through this slowly by recognizing that there's 12 inches in, in a foot. So I can go from inches to feet that there are three feet in a yard, so I can go from feet to yards. And so then I will be in yards and I can use the conversion factor that gets me into miles. So from yards, I would then get to miles. So we finally got into miles now. So now we want to use this conversion factor in the problem to get from a distance into a volume. So notice this is a special uh, conversion factor because it is unique to this problem. This is not a conversion factor you would use in any other context really. Um, and that's often the case when we have totally different unit systems being used. So, you know, we're going from a length here into a quantity of liquid, right, a volume. And that, that type of association is often going to be specific to the word problem that's involved. But once we're in miles, we know we can use that special conversion factor to get us into quarts. And once we're in quarts, we now, again, want to come back up here and note that we're going to need this English system to metric system conversion factor that goes from gallons to liters, but we're not in gallons yet, we're in quarts, so we need to go from, to gallons first, and then we can finally get to liters. So notice here that this problem involves a number of conversion factors because each arrow in my roadmap represents a conversion factor that's going to be used. And in fact, this is too long for me to really express um, in the width of the page. So I'm going to break it into two chunks. We're going to we're going to go up through to miles first just to get what the distance is in miles. And then I'm going to start over and kind of go from miles through to the volume in liters. So that's where I'm, I'm headed here with this. Um, with these conversion factors, again, if you want to go ahead and set up each of your expressions so that you can figure out the units first. That was something I had suggested. Let's see, how many of these are we gonna have? One, two, three, four, five, six of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six to get some value. And I might run out of room a little bit there. So let me move all of this over a little bit. Okay, so again, if you're new to dimensional analysis, they, this may be something that will help you um, is to just focus on where the units need to be first and then worry about the numbers that are going to go in. So for kilometers, if I want to cancel those out, I need to have kilometers on the bottom. I want to end up in meters, so meters on the top. And so notice I'm just working through my roadmap here. 
from meters to centimeters, I want to cancel out meters, so they're on the bottom now, and I want to end up with centimeters on top. From centimeters to inches, centimeters are going to cancel out on the bottom. I'm going to have inches on top. From inches to feet, I'm going to have feet on the top, inches on the bottom, and from feet to yards, I'm going to have yards on the top and feet on the bottom, and finally yards to miles, I'm going to have yards on the bottom and miles on the top. And so notice I'm going through and I'm just making sure, do I have all these units set up so that they're going to cancel out and I'm gonna end up with miles. Once I have all those units in place and I've thought about how it's supposed to be arranged, I can now jump to my conversion factors and grab some numbers. So for the meters to kilometers, that is a conversion factor that's gonna come from the prefixed table. So if I come back up here to my prefix table, I know that kilo is equal to 10 to the third. And so if I come down here, I know that means that one kilometer, kilometer is going to be one times 10 to the third meters. So notice I'm taking the kilo and I'm swapping it out with the times 10 to the third. I can do the same thing for centimeters and meters, although most of you probably have this memorized. And if you do, that's totally fine to use that. I'm not going to grade you on whether or not you use the prefix table to come up with your conversion factor or whether you just do something that you know off the top of your head. So if you know that 100 centimeters equals one meter and you're confident about that, then just feel free to fill in the numbers in that way. The next conversion factor, inches to centimeters, um, was the one that we were given up top here. So here we have the uh, 2.54 centimeters for every one inch. So the one goes with the inch, the 2.54 centimeters, or 2.54 goes with the centimeters. And then for the next two, these are ones you should have memorized. So how many inches are there in a foot? Well, there's 12 inches in every one foot. How many feet are there in a yard? There's three feet in every one yard. And for the last one, miles to yards, then we come again back up here and we're gonna use this one mile equals 1,760 yards. So 1,760 on the bottom and one mile on the top. So when I type this in my calculator, I have 20 times one times 10 to the third, times uh, 100 divided by 2.54 divided by 12 divided by 3 divided by 1760. Notice I can type that all in in one line in my calculator and it will spit out at me 12.4274 miles as my distance. And for sig figs purposes, since I'm calculating an intermediate value but I'm not to the end yet, I'm going to note that the two is my last sig fig, and I'm going to carry all those digits so I can avoid any rounding errors. So I am just keeping track of the last sig fig so that I know what to do when I get through this next set of calculations. Okay, for the last half of the roadmap, I've got to do miles into quarts. I've got to do quarts into gallons, and then gallons into liters. And so if I set up my units, I've got miles on the bottom, I've got quarts on the top, then I'm gonna cancel out the quarts and get this into gallons, and then I'm gonna cancel out the gallons and get this into liters. So if I go back up to my conversion factors, one quart for every two miles, one over two. Uh, for gallons to quarts, I know that there's one gallon equals four quarts, and that's one you should have memorized. And then for liters to gallons, that this, that's this final unit conversion up top here. So 1.000 gallons for every 3.78541 liters. 3.78541 liters. So if I multiply across 12.4274 divided by 2 divided by 4 times 3.78541 is going to give me uh, 5.88036 liters, and with sig figs, I know I still only have two, so 5.88, which is going to round up to 5.9 liters as my final answer. So again, double checking that all my units cancel out, um, double checking sig figs here, uh, both these unit conversions, one quart to two miles, and one gallon to four quarts, because they're typed out up here, you can take those as exact numbers. Um, so those do not limit the sig figs. And notice that this final unit conversion had many more sig figs than our original number. So it also does not limit the sig figs in this case.